Welcome to the tutorial version of Contra Shattered Soldier. I'm going to be covering how to beat the game with, uh, without the good endings or anything like that or the S rankings, just how to merely beat the game. There's going to be two levels that you can unlock if you get S rankings on all the levels, but I'm not going to be covering that. But this should give you a good foundation if you enjoy the game to take it further and, and check out other videos about getting the, the full hit rate and all that. I am starting on the four default uh, lives. I earned an extra life just by playing a lot. I'll explain more about that at the end of the video, uh, how, how to get that up, uh, at least my theory on it. But yeah, um, you have three different weapons. You can switch between them, between LB and RB. Uh, sorry, actually, on the PlayStation 2 controller, it's L1 and R1. I was actually using the Xbox One controller on emulation. Uh, and also, if you use the bottom triggers, if you hold down the left bottom trigger, L2, you can lock your uh, gun in a specific... Uh, well, actually, you'll, you'll lock your gun in the direction it's firing, and you can just walk in that fixed direction. So you're going to be holding L2 a lot, and you have to get used to fixing that gun in the direction with L2. If you hold R2 down, the other bottom trigger, you will just lock your guy in place, and you can rotate your gun around freely, which I only used in a few parts of the game, but it is useful. So you'll want to know how to do those. Also, all your weapons have charge attacks. So... Um, what you see when I'm launching those missiles, those are the charge attack of the mine weapon. So you want to know all the charge attacks of the weapons, you know, get familiar with them. The flamethrower charge shot is extremely useful in a lot of boss fights because it's a powerful shot. It's probably the most powerful shot you can do. So, you know, get used to using that. And each charge shot, there's basically six weapons because each one of your three weapons has a secondary charge shot um, variation. So, um... You're going to be using those in the game for sure for different things. Um, and how you use your charge shot, you hold down circle and release it. That's how I like to do it. If you want, you can double tap the fire button and charge that way, but I don't like that. I like just using the circle button to charge my shots, but it's a preference. So, um, so yeah, now that I covered the basic controls, I'll try to explain what I'm doing. Yeah, so for this, I'm using my charge shots, and I try to line up these guys and get in. You know, two charge shots will take down one. If you can... You can sometimes line up two of them in a row and take them both out with single shots. You know, it just depends on um, how you pull it off and how it goes. I think it's the game pretty much plays the same each time. So this is really a memorization game, really. It's not like some of the other Contras where there's a lot of twitch and a lot of, uh, I guess, RNG type of luck, they call it, random elements. And this, it's pretty much predictable. Once you learn this game, you pretty much already learned it. So the time you put in is very useful to practice it. And I'm going to go more details about practice. I may save that for the credits, though, since there's so much going on in the game. For this snake, you want to use those flamethrower charge shots, and you want to shoot off each segment of the snake. And then it'll do this. Once you shoot off all the segments, it's going to do this where you just stay in the middle and shoot at the head. If you stay in the middle, you'll be safe. You don't have to kill the snake. Most of the time, I didn't kill the snake. Because eventually, it'll go away, but it's faster if you kill it. You do have to kill it, of course, if you want the perfect hit rankings and you want to get the high rankings and unlock the other levels, but I'm not going to be going into that for this. For this, it's best just to like just to basically run and, and jump, you know, run on your hands and just jump. If you try to stand there and shoot the guys, they can jerk around with you and eventually you can fall. They can't hurt you, but they can grab you and lift you up and cause problems. They can kill you if they lift you up to the top of the screen, though, and you will die. For this, I charge up the flamethrower charge shot and I immediately start shooting at the head of the turtle. And the only time I break away from that is when he sends out the flies. Then I use the flamethrower just to get rid of all the flies that come out. And if you stay in the back, the head can't reach you. So I use the flames to take out those. And I resume with the charge shots again. And I just do that until it's dead. Watch out for that purple thing that he shoots out. If you see that land on the platform, then go up on the top and, and get away from that. I use... Um, for this, it's very simple. You know, you just have to know what to do. Otherwise, you know, you can lose lives here if you don't know exactly what to do. For this, um, if, he, if he's about to vomit, get your flame ready. And just use your flamethrower on him. Just stand in that area. It's safe. And use your flamethrower. And, um, you know, jump over that vomit coming back. I think that can hurt you. Then use your machine gun for when he's shooting out all of his enemies out of his nose and shit. Th those things will all get killed from the, st the steady machine gun stream if you stand in the back. Dodge that purple thing if it comes out. You know, don't, don't stay there for that. Get out of the way of that. Then make sure the bottom floor is clear and get back down with your flamethrower and just repeat with the uh, flamethrower while he's vomiting. Now I got the um, 
I had four default lives, like I said, and I found that leaving the, gun, the game running does not work for increasing your lives. Nor does continually starting the game and quitting it to get more uh, plays on the, on, the, on the record. That didn't seem to work either. So to get more lives, it seems you actually do have to play the game. I don't know how else to exploit it. I left it running for 30 hours using Fast Forward, and that did not work. So, you know, because you can stand in a safe spot at the beginning of Stage 1. It's immediately a safe zone. You can just leave the game running. Didn't work. So I, I suggest just playing the game and, tr and just putting the time in and getting it that way. Also, I use save and load states heavily to learn the game, which I'll try to go into detail at the end credits if I have time. Here you just use the um, machine gun. And you can just kind of barrel through most of these guys. I say take your time and make sure you kill these flying assholes. So get some jump shots in and take your time here. Make sure you're covering your left and right. Don't let anybody get too close. It's worth taking your time in a lot of these parts because it can be very dangerous to try to run ahead. And killing certain guys will make things a lot easier. You'll see me do that a lot where I inch the screen and I take out certain guys. It makes it much easier to manage. So make sure you take out those flying assholes. Don't proceed the screen until you've taken them out. Then get your mines ready and start bombing this area. And make sure you kill that mortar guy because they can cause a big problem if you to run past them. Now this guy can be very easy. There's a very easy trick with this. Fix your direction in the diagonal like, like you see me doing. And um, shoot at his eye when he's dropping the regular guys out. That's when you want to shoot the red, at the red eye. After the, he launches the guys, he's going to go into this missile shit each time. When he goes into the missile barrage, just create a wall of machine gun fire diagonally right above it. And none of them will get through if you do it right. Then, you know, proceed to kill the guys he launches. You know, make sure he's done killing, you know, launching the guys and then, and then do this again. If, after a while, you're going to get a feel for when he's going to launch his missiles. All this shit just comes with practice. So it's not like you're going to watch the video and, and probably do it. You might not do it the first time. Or you may not do it consistently the first time. So just... Um, keep that in mind, and, and these are just like tips so when you practice, you'll know how to practice the guys and get them down faster instead of having to learn everything from scratch. This is really um, for people who just want to beat the game as a foundation just to get familiar with the game, and then you, know, you can take it farther. I think it'll be useful for anyone who's just starting the game. But yeah, you're just going to repeat this, this pattern. That's all you're going to do. And I use saved and load states to um, practice pretty much all the parts that were, could be troublesome. So I would save at a hard part, the beginning of a hard part, and I would just keep doing it until I could do it multiple times consistently. And I actually posted up my state practice. I think I posted it all up. You'll see under practice sessions on my playlist practice session. Search that and you'll see how exactly I did it if you want more details on how I practiced everything. But pretty much I'll just practice it until I feel pretty secure with, with how I'm doing it. And then eventually I start doing full attempts at the game where I just try to beat it with the continues it allows. And they don't, you only have like three continues, so you don't have a lot of fuck-ups that you can have. And I got four lives, like I said, so that, that gave me a little bit of leniency. But by that time I already had the game down well enough to where I would have beaten it on the three, li on the, uh, three lives anyway. For this part, use the charge shots. It takes two homing charge shots to take down one of these. So I, I suggest killing them. You can jump over them. But then there's a chance they're going to pull bullshit and, and shoot at you, and they, you might get hit. So I, I like to play it safe. For this part, I somehow managed to lose two lives, so this is not going to be a great demonstration. But I don't know how I fucked it up. Sometimes the balls will travel in a way where I get stuck and I don't know how to get out of it. But it probably could have been prevented. You know, I just... I have scenarios sometimes where they move in such a way. So this part seems a little random to me, but I don't know. Maybe it was just me. But anyway, I fixed my shot, my machine gun in the diagonal, and I just, um, I concentrate on dodging the balls. Don't concentrate on landing the machine gun fire on the enemy, because then you'll get greedy and you'll get hit by one of those orbs. So basically, you're better off just concentrate on dodging the balls, and you'll get the hits in as a result, as long as you stay somewhat close to the guy. This, you got to jump between these. I tried to make a tight jump, which I could have just made a wider jump and went over both of them, so that was kind of sloppy. I mean, I have made those jumps before, so I was just, I figured I would have got it, but I fucked it up. You can do that. You're going to be fixing your shot diagonally the whole time, like before. And now he's just going to repeat the same shit again. Like I said, the enemies are pretty pattern-based. They do a lot of the same patterns again and again. So it's just a matter of practicing and, and just learning. It's probably won't have to practice this guy too much. I didn't practice him a lot at all. But you see, maybe I should have practiced him more because I got in situations where um, I didn't know how to get out of, so... You know, this wasn't really a good 
a good uh, run of the boss. They all have the, you know, all the bosses pretty much have the potential to fuck you up. And then if you fuck up once, sometimes you'll spawn in a bad place and get killed multiple times. So it's much better not to die at all. For this guy, fix your shot, your machine gun, in a diagonal uh, bottom position. For me, I have a lot of trouble struggling with fixing my shot on the diagonals. I always have trouble with it. It's very finicky for me. It's probably just me. But... I'm really bad at it. So sometimes I'll take my time to fix the shot in the proper direction. You'll see I won't go into a fight right away. For this, basically, you want to shoot diagonally at the guy. When he's about to vomit, you want to start moving to the right on these rails. Be careful about how you jump while your shot is fixed because you can't walk on the rails with your hands while you're shooting. So you got to time your jumps. Uh, you have to distance your jumps perfectly. Otherwise, you'll fall in between that gap and die. So just be aware of that. Make sure you're you're planning ahead for those jumps. And when he shoots the bubbles out, you just you can you keep your diagonal shot fixed, and you just jump up and down and, and get rid of all the bubbles as you saw me doing. This is the same as before with, you know, the homing shots. You can even just run past them. You don't have to fight them. I was just playing it safe. I didn't want to fuck around. Now I'm getting my shots ready. I even fix my shot walking backwards, but see, the cutscenes gets rid of that. So then you have to do it again, which is annoying. The cutscenes are very fucking annoying. That's my one complaint about the game. So now you're going to fix your shot walking backwards and using your flamethrower charge shots and jumping and shooting the top turret. Make sure you're aware of that bottom thing moving down. Don't let that hit you. And when you see the lightning in the turret, stop firing at the, you know, st get out of the range of that gun. Just stay on the bottom. Then you get up here again. When you see the lightning, get down again. That's all. It's very easy. Repeat that again when it charges forward, you know, get, get out of there again. Now, when, once the gun is destroyed, get up here. And I don't think those explosions will hurt you when he destroys the environment, but I, I avoid them anyway just to be safe because, see, there's, there's some big explosions he does. See, like that, I don't know if that hurts you. It might, but I, never, I usually never get hit by it. So, um, basically, just don't use fixed shot here. Stop using the fixed shot and start throwing out diagonal shots. Precise diagonal shots at the... Um, bottom things that shoot up that fire and electricity it makes it much easier if you destroy those things otherwise you're going to have a much harder time taking out the missiles you want to make sure that you're always paying attention and try to stay in the middle when you can to be aware of when those missiles pop up on the corners of the screen the more you can stay in the center the more time you have to react but you'll get more comfortable with it over time and it won't be that hard but you know you want to play it safe initially but yeah, if you throw out those diagonal shots, two good diagonal shots will take out one of those bottom things. So if you can get rid of them all, it's good. That's also what you would need to do for an S ranking. You'd have to, because you got to get the hit rate up high. But I wasn't going for that. I just got rid of them because it made things a lot easier. Now this bottom part can be very tricky until you get it, until you get the general idea down, which I'll try to explain. I think I fucked it up though, so my explanation is not going to be great. See, I... Well, actually, okay. You want to get in as close as you can before... Like, if you see that laser coming out, that red laser getting ready, I fuck up here. But you want to get in as close as you can to that red laser. Like, you want to jump on the closest platform because while you're ducking, the screen is going to be scrolling and then you'll get dragged into the pit. And that's the hardest part about this. So, you want to see, you want to get right on there and then duck. If you're on that other platform, you can get dragged into the pit. It's very dangerous to do it that way. Take this out immediately with a charge shot and then continue with just getting close like that and just duck down when the red laser is about to come out. And you just want to keep repeating that, getting in as close as you can. That's what helped me to do it. See, getting in close again, then ducking. Staying on that back, that back platform would have been death pretty much. Sometimes you will survive and get away with staying on one of the back platforms. You'll have enough time to still jump out, but it's very risky. So yeah, I don't recommend doing that at all. And you can select the stages in any order. I just did them in the order that I felt would be good uh, based on pretty much like how many lives I had left. And sometimes I just wanted a break. Like this level's an easy level for me, so I just wanted like a little bit of a fucking breather. The game gets fucking intense. Even though the patterns are pretty simple, you know, you have to adapt to a lot of them. And it's a constant switching between patterns, so, you know, it, it can be a little exhausting. But it does get easier and easier the more muscle memory you have with practicing all the parts. For this, I use the charge shot to take out the missiles. You don't even have to kill the missiles. You can just dodge them if you want. 
doesn't matter. Unless, of course, you're going for a higher ranking. But like I said, I don't give a shit about that. So now, um, this boss initially can seem very tough, but it's actually it's quite easy. And I'll explain. I'll break it down and explain exactly what to do and when. Once you remember what to do, you'll, you won't have a problem. First off, don't worry about shooting his backpack. Because we're just trying to survive in this run, so don't even worry about doing that. Immediately go up to the top and shoot the missiles down. Make sure you get all those missiles and stay up at the top of the screen and you won't even have to dodge those mines. When all the mines are gone, get ready to go underneath the guy. Make sure your firing is, is fixed in the right uh, shot, you know, shooting right. Now just continually shoot this and all you got to do is try to lure the missiles out a little bit and then just dodge them. Now fix your shot to the left, start shooting at this thing. Move in a circular motion to dodge these, these missiles and shoot down some of them while you're doing it. And, you know, dodge the flames and the missiles. You know, the flames usually take a while to start shooting down towards you, so you can get in a lot of shots. Just make sure you clear out the missiles. Now, when he, does, when he pulls this thing back, get ready for him to move forward. Take out the missiles, get ready for him to move forward. Now fix your shot again to the right and stay up in the upper top. He's going to do the same exact thing he did when he started the fight. So... Don't go down there. Just stay up there because it's very dangerous. The mines are very hard to, to uh, dodge. I never got them down. But you don't have to if you do that. You don't have to worry about shooting the backpack like I said. And now, you know, you do the same exact thing again that you just did. Like I said, the patterns, do, you know, repeat. So once you get it down, it gets pretty easy. For this, you're going to be shooting his gun out now. So just focus on dodging things, shooting the missiles out if you need to, and just shoot the gun. And once the gun explodes, it's extremely easy. It just takes a little time, but it's super easy. The whip cannot reach you, so just stay all the way back. The whip will not reach you. Now all you got to do is shoot out these missiles or avoid them. And now fix your shot down and immediately get to the left after he does the missiles. Because you're going to be machine gunning straight down at this thing that he pops out that he uses to shoot that blue thing. Of course, if you don't do that, you'll get killed because you, you can't be in that area. But, uh, you know, very simple. He's going to do the whip and then he does the missiles again. You know, after the missiles is when he always does the, uh, the blue shot. So just be ready for that. And just fix your shot down again and machine gun. And after you do this a few times, it'll kill him. It appears difficult, but it's actually a very easy fight when you just play it to beat it. I remember when I was younger, this game seemed so fucking brutal, and this part seemed insane to me. I guess it shows how impatient I was back then, and um, this game mostly sat on my shelf. It just felt so fucking difficult to me. Like I, 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 It was like overwhelming for me when I was in 2002. But back then, I had beaten, maybe I had beaten a few hundred games, I'm not even sure. You know, in my history of gaming, I was 21, 21 years old. I was mostly into weightlifting, so I was more hardcore with that than I was with the games at that time. But, um... This game was so overwhelming for me. I mean, and, you know, of course I couldn't practice save and load state on an emulator, which, you know, it makes it a lot more manageable when you can practice each part patiently. But there was a training mode I should have used. I could have used the training mode and just played the shit out of the game, and I, I would have probably been able to learn it. But I just didn't have the patience back then or whatever it was. For some reason, I never even went through the easy mode, which gives you 99 lives and 9... I'm sorry, 99 continues and 9 lives on each continue, which makes it a great way to play through the game the first time. And it's, it only took me two hours to beat that way my first time playing it again in many years. For this part, use the flamethrower. Don't use fixed shots. Use the flamethrower. Take out these pods as fast as you can and be aware of the enemies climbing. Try to get like them while you're getting the pods. Try to take care of two things at once because they'll jump and they can easily kill you if you're not if you don't have your flame protecting you you know you can wave it around to protect you when they jump at you but it's dangerous it's better to take them out while they're on the wall if you can't see they're, they're, they're very aggressive so you want to be ready for them but focus on taking out the pods don't worry about these guys and don't worry about the green drips that come down a big part of this game is knowing what can and cannot hurt you those green drips can't hurt you so don't waste your energy trying to dodge those. And you just do the same thing. You know, Don't get too far down on the bottom of the screen. Stay kind of in the middle if you can. If you go to the bottom too far while the screen's scrolling down, you'll get hit by those stupid plant enemies and you'll get killed. So just don't do that. For this, after this little cutscene, you're going to fix your flamethrower shot uh, to, you know, upward. And then all you're going to do is, str is strafe and, and um, 
Use the flamethrower to burn these circular things that come out, these rings. Focus on taking them out. Don't worry about hitting the boss so much. You know, be concerned about taking out the rings first. Now he's going to do something where you can't hit him. You can also jump on the boss during, you know, at this point. So don't worry about hitting into the boss. You just And don't worry about hitting into the blue and red lasers. The lasers will not hurt you. It's that explosion or that fire on the bottom uh, of the ground. That's what you got to dodge. So only concern about jumping over those. For this, after you take down this form, he does a little thing where he hits into the ground. So make sure you're not near him when he does that. Then after that, you're just going to fix your shot up and just walk with him. And when those drops come out, you can walk past them if you need to, but wait till one drops before you walk. I did a little bit dangerous thing where I fixed my shot up while he's using the laser on the ground. And if you stand really close to him, you can hit him while he does that. But if you want to play it more safe, you don't need to do that. You can just uh, wait till he's done with that and just continue with the pattern of walking back and forth with the gun up and, and avoiding the things that drop down. Now this part's very easy, you just use charge shots and walk slowly and you'll take out everything safely. So for this part, I can go more back into what I was saying uh, previously. So yeah, this game used to be really, um, like I said, really brutal for me. But since then I've probably beaten about a thousand more games. And, um, you know, because I started getting heavy in emulation, save and load states to practice and I was killing games fast once I started doing that. I also just became better over the years from doing extreme modes, Ninja Gate and Black, uh, you know, on, in mission mode. Um, you know, on Master Ninja, going for 40 million was one of the most extreme things I did. So, just that, you know, that got me much better taking that on. I was also, you know, starting off in 2004, started doing things like Halo 2 on Legendary and taking on these extreme modes that were kind of new at the time. Uh, Resident Evil 4 on Professional, you know, things like that. And then God of War on Titan eventually. So things like this. And, you know, I started, I was doing this more and more. And so since, and, you know, all these old arcade games I play with, with ridiculous patterns. Like these patterns are very simple compared to the, game, the old arcade games I was playing. So the combination of going through all that shit and coming back, you know, like 17 years later, um, you know, has made the game very manageable for me and actually enjoyable instead of like it felt like a chaotic mess. I didn't even recognize the patterns back then. It just felt like chaos. So, you know, it changes your perspective coming back almost like a different person after, you know, pushing yourself for so many years and going through so many games. So it was cool to experience that. Now for this, um, I didn't explain, but in the beginning of this fight, all you need to do is um, use the mine weapon and charge your shots and release. Make sure they're fully charged and then release. Fully charged, then release. While that those, those um, bullet shooting things are parachuting down, you want to just keep doing that. And you should take them all out without a problem. And then uh, for this part, hopefully I'll have time to explain. But um, he's, when you see bubbles coming up, he's going to rise up and, hit, and, and go through that area. So make sure you're not standing on that platform when he does that. That's very easy. So you get out of there. Um, when, he, when he does his... Um, after he's done doing that, he's going to go into one of the sides. You want to keep an eye on him and see what side. Sometimes he'll do two passes, sometimes he'll do three. But that time he did two, so get ready for that and shoot in the, shoot down like that. You know, not down, but shoot at him. And then when you get close, start jumping. Sometimes you got to jump over two at once, so be ready to do that. Get on this platform immediately when he goes down in the ground. And then get ready to drop down. Make sure you're lined up with one of the platforms. Even if you can't see him, you know it's the middle of the screen, so make sure you're lined up. Drop down immediately to dodge that upward thing that he does. Now he's going to repeat the same shit again. So, you know, just dodge these. Very easy. Now keep an eye on him. He does it three times always, the bubble thing. Now keep an eye on it and see where he's going. It looks like there he went two passes again. So just keep shooting and that's it. Sometimes he will do three passes, but, you know, the tricky part sometimes is being ready to get on that platform when he goes under the ground. Sometimes you can miss that. Then he'll pop up in the middle of the screen and die. I don't know if that can hurt you. I just avoid it because sometimes these games have where the dead bodies can hurt you and shit, you know. It's, it's annoying. This can be a tricky level. I actually find 2 and 3 to be 
some of the harder levels for me that give me the most problem. Four I found easy and one I find easy, but, but two and three can be a little tricky. So I'll explain what I'm doing here. Fix your shot to the left immediately, machine gun, and just dodge these. You know, you just jump up in the air when they're about to come down. I don't think the balls will hurt you when they're in the air. So again, it's about knowing what can and cannot hurt you. For the laser, wait for it to uh, glow a little bit stronger. Then it's going to sweep to the right. Just be ready to jump over that. It's timing. For this, just fix your shot to the left. Keep firing and wait for this thing to glow. And then when it shoots, jump over both gunshots at the same time. It may take a little practice to get used to it, but you know that's it's always going to be the same timing every time. So eventually you will learn the game. That's pretty much how everything in this game is. You just got to put the time in and practice and learn. If you're willing to do that, you will beat this game. You know, so don't get frustrated. Uh, just remember, you're going to put in a lot of time. I think this took me around 8 hours and 52 minutes to beat. So it wasn't like I just put the game on and beat it. It's pretty fucking tough, you know. It's intense. But it gets a lot less intense when you know exactly what to expect. You know, you, you're familiar with everything that's coming up. Though there are parts that catch me off guard sometimes or I get sloppy. You know, I could have practiced more and got the game down even better. So there's always, you know, I, I could have, of course, put more work in. For here, just shoot left the whole time. You'll take out those missiles. For this, you know, just pay attention to where these lasers are coming down. And don't go beyond the point that I'm going here. I don't like to go any farther because I think that, that if you go farther, you can get crushed by that machine, by that uh, vehicle. So just stay in here. Sometimes this is very dangerous, but I wait till all the lasers pass usually. And keep firing left and take this out. Now, sometimes you won't have time to do this. Sometimes it, this, the guy will come out on the missile very quick. And you're going to have to make a small jump to hop over it. That's the only way you can get past it. For this... Wait for the flame to sweep back to the right. Do not dodge when he initially shoots. And you got to make sure you make a large enough jump to get over that flame. And don't come back to the right too fast to shoot at him again. Now for these, I use charge shots. And if I have to, I jump at the far left of the screen. But see, it's still very dangerous because if you like touch the guy, I think you'll get killed. And um, sometimes the flames can be very hard to dodge. But, it, but you can, if you line it upright, you can take out all those guys with the charge shots. So try to execute that better than I did there. Also, with the turret that I killed, remember, I, I fixed my shot upward. But you'll be able to... A lot of this is going to be self-explanatory. I'm just trying to cover some of the uh, things that might be missed. For this, use your right trigger now for the first time to fix your guy in the position and use the flamethrower. And now what you're going to do is take all these out as they come, but stay in this safe corner. You got to watch out, though, because the bottom ones seem the most aggressive. So be more wary of the bottom uh, blue orbs. They seem to be the most difficult. But, you know, keep them all in mind. See, because the bottom one almost got me. See how dangerous this is? Okay, so then I take, then, then you just use the flame and you take that out. Very easy if you do that. It could be dangerous, though, with those blue things. Now go back to your flamethrower and start charging up your shots. And, you, you know, it's going to take two charged shots, two fully charged shots to take out one motorcycle guy. So be ready for that. Pull out their pistol. It's very dangerous because they fire fast. So just be aware. When you see that pistol, I'll be aware that there may be a bullet that comes out if you don't kill them fast enough. Be ready for that. But overall, it's very easy once you start taking them out quickly. But you can only hit them at a certain position, you know, when they're fully arrived. So, you know, don't waste your shots early if you can help it. For this, you're just going to fix your machine gun in the up-firing position. And now you're just going to um, shoot up at this guy constantly and don't move for a while. It's like a game of chicken. Just try to do it as long as you can do it before he fires. And you'll take him out before he can even do his, his move. And for this, you're going to shoot straight up at this guy as well until he's dead. Just be wary of where those things are landing. I don't, the projectiles won't hurt you when they're in the air, but the fire can kill you. If he does this, just dodge in between the gaps. He does different things. Sometimes he, most of the time he won't do that attack. Now for this, the laser comes first, then the fire. So just be wary that the fire is going to come after that laser. So don't jump too early. Because you can jump over that laser and go right into the fire when it appears. Very dangerous. Now jump, you know, go all the way to the extreme side and jump up in the air to dodge that laser. And be aware that sometimes he charges forward and charges into the middle of the screen. So, you know, dodge that as well. This part is extremely easy if you follow my advice. Use the land, the uh, mine weapon and start charging your homing shots. Now all you really got to do here is just inch the screen. 
uh, you know, and, and use a diagonal shot here to take this out. He can't hurt you while you're in that groove. Make sure you take out any enemies and be aware if they do shoot mines, you know, get the fuck out. For this, inch the screen just enough to where you see, you know, kill that guy and inch the screen just enough to where you see um, the turret flashing and taking damage. This is the only weapon that seems to hit it, so use this shot. Three of those will take out a turret. Now move carefully, take that asshole out with the charge shot. Do the same diagonal fixed uh, bullshit you were just doing to pull some bullshit. And after this, very easy. Just inch the screen enough. Get back up over here and do a jumping right uh, jump where you curve back to the left so you don't land back in that dangerous area. You don't even have to be that. You don't even have to play it like that carefully. But I just like to be careful. I don't usually um, improvise on things that I've practiced. So if I did something in practice, I try to leave it the same as it was. Even if it's not that cool looking or whatever. I'm just trying to beat the game. And this is my first time beating the game. So... What you're saying is effective, not necessarily flash. For this, use the flamethrower. Uh, jump when he does that and land back on the platform. When his, when his arm is glowing, he's going to do that shot. So be ready for it and be ready for it to travel back. And what you're going to be doing now is using your charged shots and hitting his shoulder plates. Um, after you destroy both shoulder plates, he'll, uh, he may finish up, you know, he may go through another round of attacks, but then after that he'll be done. It doesn't seem like you can hit them while he's firing, but mostly while he's walking, you can hit him. You gotta line it up with the shoulder plates. Very easy to do. See, now his shoulder plates are gone, I believe, so now he's gonna get ready to do his next cutscene, which is very easy. You're gonna switch over to the mines. Now, you don't even need to fight him if you don't want to. You can just wait it out, but I think it's faster to shoot him. And of course, I'm not talking about S ranking, you know. So yeah, switch to your mines, fix your position to the right, and just use charge mine shots and you know it's going to show where they're going to land so just go in the gap very fucking easy so just do this a few times and um you know and and that's going to end that phase now this next part is tricky but it's not bad once you get it down but it is kind of tricky it does take some some skill to pull off you're going to uh fix your machine gun to the left Again, oh, I'm sorry, flamethrower. Fix your flamethrower to the left. And now you're going to you're gonna stay at the extreme edge. And when these things come, you're going to jump and curve back down to the left. And you're going to release your shot so that it's aimed at his head. And see, I did it fast enough, or his back, I don't know. It's, it's in that upper area. But if you do it fast enough, you will kill him before he can do his next form. I actually wanted to explain his next form, so I'll try to do that. This part can't hurt you, so I'll go on explaining what I was going to explain. If you don't kill him as fast as I did, he's going to go to the left and right sides and stand on the ground. Just stay in the middle and duck. And you'll avoid all of his attacks. And then he's going he's gonna to choose a side and land back down again. And you're going to repeat the pattern you did with the spinning discs on the ground. That's all you got to do. So just be aware of that. I would have showed that. I wanted to show that safe position, but I killed him too fast. Because this was really just me beating the game, not really trying to do a tutorial. You know. Now this is the final stage. Unless you got good ranks, then you'll unlock. But, you know, if you're watching this, you probably didn't get the S rankings or whatever. Maybe you need a total of an A ranking. I'm not even sure. But anyway, for this, this part starting out is very easy. A lot easier than stage three at the beginning. Just play safe with the machine gun. Use your minds to take out those assholes. And don't rush, you know. Make sure you can see what's coming up. I did something stupid here where I got excited because I earned a one-up. And then I didn't pay attention to the right where the enemy was. So... I uh, forgot about that enemy and got shot. So, you know, you don't want to do that. Now, get your mines ready. Take out that asshole. Now, put your flamethrower back on. And for this, we're going to use that, that right trigger uh, fixed shot again that we rarely use. I was jacking around because I, I, I like to practice the controls a little. So now, stand just in distance of his head. And um, you're going to see me die here. So, uh, maybe I'll explain it. I'll explain it on the next continue. That guy can pull bullshit with those bubbles. I'm actually not consistently good at dealing with those bubbles. If you get lucky, he won't do those bubbles, though, and that's nice, and you can kill him where he, where he doesn't really do them, and that's what happens here. But I'll still explain it if I can. So anyway, yeah, play this part safe again. I was thinking of editing the continues out that I used, but I think a tutorial is better to show mistakes to, to some degree. 
because I didn't make that many mistakes. I only wasted two continues, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad. You only have three continues anyway, so it's not like it could go on that long in this game. So, all right. So yeah, we do the same things that we you know that we were doing, and then you're gonna get you know get back here again. And like I said, I do jack around with the control to make sure that I'm using the right fixed shot. I, you know, I don't want to just trust my memory always. Okay, so now you're just going to fix your shot, your right fix shot, and you can jack around with the flamethrower if you need to. And now when these missiles are about to come down, right when they're about to come down, jump up on that truck. you got to time it right. It can be a little tight. But I think I got lucky, and I think he does the missiles again. So keep your distance just enough. And when the missiles are about to come down, when it's, you know, you know, when the truck, basically when you see the truck coming down is when you jump. That's your, your, your cue. Now at this point he does do his bubbles, but luckily I had enough damage on him since he didn't use it earlier. So you're not going to see the bubble phase. He's just going to die. But what you would do with the bubbles, or what I do with the bubbles, I fix my shot as I was, and I jerk around with the flamethrower up and down to try to take out the bubbles. And, you know, you try to make a path. Try to make, try to clear a path in the bubble so that you can jump through the gap again when he goes back down. Now, for this, of course, take that guy out with the flamethrower. Use your charge shot to take this guy out on the right and then immediately start moving back to the left. Okay, now this is very tricky. Use your, um, make sure you take out all the crabs. That's what you want to focus on. Move the fan very slightly. Try to leave the fan alone if you can. See, I touched it there. I should have left it alone. And just jump over the fan. Now, be ready for an asshole to come out. You know, don't have to kill him. Just just make sure he's gone. And then use the fan very slightly. Move the fan very slightly. Use your flamethrower here to get through those guys. Now, this is very easy. Dodge the bullet, obviously, but then just shoot straight with your machine gun. Make sure all the assholes at the top are dead. Then they'll stop spawning. Then shoot out your landmines. And that's all you got to do. These guys cannot get up there. They will not hurt you. Nothing will hurt you. So stay up here with the mines. Make sure they're hitting that red uh, thing in the middle. Or not in the middle, but, you know, you know, you see what I'm saying, that red bulb thing and that's it very fucking easy now this is where it can get tricky this will take some state practice for sure well this whole game will but this this can be tricky because you got to do a boss gauntlet at this point you know without without losing a continue so when that's about to appear it shows where those are going to appear so you know now a duck for this part you can use homing shots while you're crouched on the ground but i'm not fast at, at, at switching weapons so i never do that now you're going to see me die here i play this very sloppily because this is where I lost my I lost my next continue here. I was getting very uh, nervous or something. I don't know. I wasn't playing well. I needed a warm up on this guy for sure. So you're gonna see the you're gonna see how you can fail. This is hard to predict. This part, this first one, is hard to predict. I should have not died on the second one. It's very easy to predict once you once he does the first uh, the first wave along the ground. And I'll try to explain how to read it. But it's better to explain when I'm actually you know not fucking it up. So maybe I'll wait to explain it better. But yeah, for this, um, he's going to rotate the, these beams. You want to stay in between them, obviously. Now, for this part's tough because if you try to jump up on the wall, you'll probably hit into the beam if you don't do it right. So just climb up onto the wall instead of jumping up onto the wall. That's gotten me killed multiple times trying to jump up onto the wall. So you should just gradually climb up onto the wall. So now you're going to see me. You saw me fuck up. Now you'll see me mostly do it properly. You know. So now for this... I'm going to try to explain it again. You know, move along with these lasers. And hopefully I was doing it right and climbing along the wall. Or no, I was, see, I was, I was doing it dangerously there. I don't think you need to do that. You, you, you know, if you do decide to jump up on the wall, make sure the beams are out of the way. It's a lot more dangerous to do it that way, though. But I guess I didn't realize that I had climbed up onto the wall previously, or I probably would have continued to do that. I should have practiced it that way. I should have just climbed up on the wall. Probably didn't even notice that I did that. You know, I was so focused on the game. When he does this, he's about to shoot off in the direction that he was facing. Sometimes he, he, he can do different patterns with that. Make sure you're predicting where the ball is about to hit the ground and bounce back up. You just got to think about it while it's happening and get used to it. And that, that just takes practice. There's not, there's not not much I could explain about dodging that. It's just like a practice thing. When you see he's about to do that, you know, get down again on the ground. You can use your homing shot if you're good at, at swapping weapons out and go for it if you want I wasn't in a rush. I was just playing patiently because I knew if I played it patiently, he would go down. And I probably wouldn't fuck up too much. I mean, I, ideally, I didn't want to lose a life on the guy because that would be sloppy for me. Because in practice, I, I've beaten every part in practice without dying. So I, I would never allow myself to like, consider it a good practice if I died on a part. So 
you know, I had the potential to beat every part without, uh, without dying. But, you know, you get nervous. Things go wrong sometimes. Sometimes you do something a little different and it fucks up the whole pattern. So, you know, you want to be prepared for shit like that and have enough lives as a uh, insurance policy. So if you do fuck up, you have some lives to fall back on. And you'll see me use that insurance policy, you know, shortly. For this, just shoot straight up with the machine gun. Take out those pods first. If any guys get on the ground, take them out. Make sure you're shooting those guys away. And don't worry. Don't feel like in a rush because you're not. The, um, the heart cannot come down and crush you. It makes it look like it can, but it can't happen. So you're not timed on this. Just take your fucking time. Make sure you take all the guys out. Of course, don't jump because then you'll get hit by the heart and die. But just stay on the ground and shoot all those things. Should be fine. This part is very easy. You want to take out the pods on the previous because it'll keep spawning spiders. That's why you do that. For this part, just fix your position to the right with the flamethrower. Jump up on him. Fix it to the left. You obviously don't want to touch his head. That's the part that hurts you. And that's about it. Just walk backward. When he gets to the end again, jump over it again. Fix your shot again. And uh, even if you're not as fast at doing this, he won't go past that point. So you can just stay hugging that left side until he dies. For this part, fix your machine gun fire to the right. Don't go all the way to the back because those, the guys do lower down and can hurt you. Now, when he rears up all the way, he's going to charge. Get ready for that and get ready to jump over it when he charges. you got to be able to determine the subtlety in his little movements that he does when he rears up slightly and when he does a, a bigger rearing up. It's a subtle difference, but that's the cue for when he's going to charge. And for this, you know, just fix your shot up diagonally if he's on the ceiling. Sometimes he doesn't always go on the ceiling. And now fix your shot to the left again. Now just focus on these things falling down, but in your peripheral... Look at him, because if you see him rear up to a certain degree, he's going to do that, and I almost missed it and died. And then he's going to move back to the other side again. So, you know, there is a slight change there, so you got to be ready for that. Like I said, I almost fucked that up, but I was able to just react in a moment, you know. So Twitch can save your ass sometimes, Twitch skill, but this game is a lot about uh, memorization of the patterns, really, more so than a lot of other uh, Contra games. Now, this part I fuck up, but I'll try to explain it. You want to you want to grab that ceiling whenever that shit goes up. Use your charge shots to shoot that red ball. Now, I should have moved to the right. Well, actually, I guess I did here. Now, when he's doing when he's doing as soon as he goes down to the ground after that after that, he's going to do the blue beam. So be ready to duck. Now, just run at the right. You could stand there too on one side, but I noticed sometimes when I did that I got hit, so I just run to the right. Now, this part I was stupid. I didn't get out of the way, and look how close I ended up to the guy. And that ends up getting me killed. I guess if I would have stayed on the ground, maybe I could have let him pass, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't used to doing that in practice, so that fucked me up. And when I practiced, that didn't really happen. So that's why I say it's good to have a few extra lives in case something goes wrong. Or just practice more, either way. Again, the same shit happened to me again, which is not good. And I decided to stay on the ground, but then I forgot that the fire was going to come down. So, lost two lives there. So, yeah, not a great execution, but it does show the safe spots and the general idea. This guy is extremely fucking easy. One of the easiest parts in the game. For this, you're just going to shoot down at his eyes. I shoot down in the middle because it'll hit, like, both eyes with the machine gun. When he's shooting those, just move around and dodge that shit. And try to shoot down at the, at the middle. Maybe it doesn't hit both eyes at the same time, but once one of the eyes is gone... Shoot down and hit the bulb. That's what's going to kill the guy. And also, when these snakes are moving around, don't worry about them. Just stay in the center. As long as you're centered, they can't hurt you. And the drops they shoot down don't seem to hurt you either. So, shoot down, blow up that bulb on his head, and you've beaten the game. So, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a tough game, man. It took me, like I said, it took me a while. It took me like nine hours or something. So, And that's gameplay time. I don't count breaks or anything like that. So, now I'll try to finish up things that I had a rush to explain. Uh, maybe there's a few things I can try to clear up. Yeah, so this is the bad ending. If you want to get the good ending and you want to unlock the last two stages, um, you have to get like S rankings in all the levels, or you have to have an overall ranking of A or an overall ranking of S, I think. Something like that. I don't know. I mean, you'd have to read up on that. Obviously, if you want to get the perfect hit percentage, you know, you'd want to check another video because this doesn't show that. It's based on your hit rate, and I think if you lose lives, you get penalized and lose percentage on your hit rate. That's my understanding. But I wasn't concerned about that. 
but this should give you a good foundation to, uh, you know, if you enjoy the game. And, you, you know, before you go for S rank, you just got to beat the game first. You know, it's not a good idea to try to get the S rank your first time beating the game. I mean, it's going to, you know, I think it's better to do it in steps. Practice, you know, playing on easy mode was a great way for me to get a little bit familiar with the game. And, man, I didn't have to practice as much when I was practicing with save and load states. Like, my practice was greatly reduced. Because, you know, even on even with 9 lives per continue, and pretty much 99 continues is pretty much unlimited almost. Um, you know, I did die a lot. Because it was two hours. So, I mean, I died for at least an you know, hour and 20 minutes. Since the game takes about 40 minutes maybe. But, yeah, I mean, I learned a lot in that process. So, I, I recommend first go through the game on easy. With the 99 lives. And remember, easy, normal, hard, very hard. It's all the same combat-wise. As far as I know, there's no differences in the combat difficulty. So you're not going to have to adjust anything in, in your play style. The only difference is how many lives and continues you get, as far as I understand. So be aware of that. Also be aware, you know, and after doing that with easy, I would recommend doing a state practice as I did. Using, you know, using the emulator. I mean, if you don't want to use the emulator, you know, you can use the training mode, which gives you 30 lives. There's also codes. I couldn't get any of them to work, but there's apparently there's a code for uh, 30 lives, apparently, that I couldn't get to work at all. There's also a code that I think is fake. It's 99 continue code. I believe it's a fake code. I don't think it exists. Um, but somebody was trying to spread it. And, yeah, that's about it. Like, um, you know, use, use that. Use training mode, easy practice. The thing is, as I was telling you, you can't exploit... Um, getting the, the the default lives up. Eventually, they will give you four default lives, which is permanent life upgrade that you get every time you play. But And I think you can get it up to eight. I, I read that people got it up to eight. And you can earn more continues by playing co-op, apparently. So if you play a lot of co-op, you can probably earn some extra continues, default continues that are permanent. But I wasn't able to exploit it by leaving the game running in a safe spot for 30 fucking hours on Fast Forward on the emulator. That did not work. I also was not able to get it by quitting the game 50 times. So I think you actually have to play the game in clear levels. I think it's based on clearing levels. So that's all for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching.